and welcome to Beaver Memorial Church. We gather in this place virtually as friends, brothers, and sisters united in Christ. Please know that you are loved and always welcome here at Beaver Memorial. A few announcements this morning. First of all, as you notice, our Christmas decorations are gone. I want to thank Barb Lever and her fam family for putting up and taking down the Christmas decorations. Thank you so much. And I also want to announce the passing of Mrs. Ann Wright. She was a beloved longtime member here at Beaver who was the one who wrote all the birthday and anniversary cards, that was Mrs. Ann. So just keep her family in our prayers as they celebrate her life this Tuesday at 1 p.m. The service is reserved for the family to come in, but we as, be as her family or be family can view her services online on our YouTube station beginning at one o'clock. And lastly, this Wednesday, we have our music ministry meeting where we sit and discuss our music ministry. This meeting is, is invited and open to all. So if you would like to attend, just send me an email and I will send you the Zoom link. And let us not forget our members who are listed on our prayer list. Let us always keep them lifted up in our prayers. And now for our call to worship. We're gonna have Mrs. Karen help us with that today. From the waters of creation, the earth sprang forth. From the waters of a womb, Jesus was given to us. From the waters of a river, people were baptized and marked as God's children. Praise be to God, whose loving gifts and presence have called us together. Let us shout our love to God for God's abundant love. Amen. Let us pray. God who watches over us, offering us light and hope, be with us this day. Help us to remember your healing, your cleansing, and claiming love for us. Remind us again of the many ways in which you reach out to us. May the image of the waters 
be for us an image of hope. Bring us closer to you, loving God. Embrace us again with your love. We open your hearts to you this day. Amen. today um, to talk to you a little about Sunday school. Um, if you didn't know, Sunday school's been going well. Though COVID has prevented us from meeting in person, I, Kirsten Winner, my fellow teacher, and a consistent group of 10 children have benefited from having a regular Zoom Sunday school meeting at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning. We've supported one another, we've shared prayer concerns and praises on a weekly basis. Since September, we've been studying the books of the Bible. And to all my Sunday school kids, how many books in the Bible are there? 66. 66. Good job. Kirsten and I made large folder packets of our curriculum so that each child has it at home and can follow along as we go. After getting through the book of Esther, we took a break and did a different program to celebrate the Advent and Christmas seasons. Each Sunday School Zoom meeting is scripture-focused, and the children like to take turns reading from the Bible themselves. 
I'd like to really thank the parents who faithfully sign on their children each week so that we can continue growing together through these tough COVID months. If you're interested in joining us, please reach out to me or Kirsten. As of this morning, we pick back up on our journey through the books of the Bible, and we plan to make our way through it by summer. Thank you. The scripture reading today is from Acts 19, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He asked them. No, they replied. We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then when baptism did you experience? What baptism did you experience, he asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. Paul said, John's baptism called for repentance from sin. But John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came to them, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mrs. Karen. Let us pray. Draw us close, Holy Spirit. As the scriptures we read and the word is proclaimed, let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts, and let all other words slip away. May there be one voice that we hear today, the voice of truth and grace. Amen. Have you ever came home from a long day at work and noticed that something wasn't quite right? You walk in and sort of pause for a moment to make sure you're seeing what you're really seeing. Maybe the surprise is your spouse, who never cooks or cleans, decides to do both. Now everything looks and smells really good. Or maybe it's your kids who always fight and now they're peacefully holding hands watching a movie together. Whatever the case may be, when you walk in the house, your senses tell you that something is just different. That's pretty much what's happening in today's passage. Paul makes two visits to the city of Ephesus. The first time Paul visited Ephesus, he became became very familiar with the territory and the people. So he knew their ways and their personalities. And upon leaving Ephesus, Paul had made a promise to his believers that he would one day return to check on them and just to make sure they were staying on track and spreading spreading the gospel accordingly. So in today's reading, Paul is arriving back to Ephesus for the second time, in which he can tell something wasn't quite right. The believers of the day, they were acting kind of strange. So Paul asked them, did y'all receive the Holy Spirit? Unfortunately, These believers did not receive the Holy Spirit because they knew of only one type of baptism. Paul's question to the believers was a pretty powerful question because it reminds us of a few things this morning. It reminds us us that how important it is for us believers to actually receive the Holy Spirit. 
It also reminds us that baptism is by water is just a symbol of repentance and does not necessarily mean you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the connectional, the relational aspect that comes from spending time with Jesus. Paul's question also reminds us that the, the power of the Holy Spirit is so evident that it's noticeable if you have it or if you don't have the Holy Spirit. So again, Paul knew something wasn't right. Like walking through the snow with no shoes on, these believers stood bare and cold because they did not have the Holy Spirit in their lives. By their reply, these disciples showed Paul that they didn't know much about Jesus. They knew enough to pass as devout Christians, but they didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit or Jesus' promise to send the Holy Spirit upon those who believed. When Paul left Ephesus the first time, he thought his believers were stable in their beliefs. So Paul was very shocked to discover that these believers only knew about the baptisms of John. Come to find out, Apollos, who's mentioned in this passage, was another Christian teacher who had also came to Ephesus to teach folks about Jesus. But he only knew about the baptism of John, so unfortunately, his teachings were half-truths. So here we are, we have a teacher spreading the gospel, but leaving out the life-saving powers of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like trying to bake a cake with no eggs. It just won't turn out right. Luckily, Apollos was taught later about the Holy Spirit but he had, all, he had created these Holy Spirit-deprived disciples. Anyways, as you and I know, there are a lot of Apollos walking around who don't know the full story of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Some of these Apollos are just ignorant due to their circumstances or common understanding, kind of like Apollo in this passage. However, there are those Apollos who know all about the life-saving powers of the Holy Spirit, how it loves, how it heals and unifies, but these folks still decide to spread lies and half-truths, leaving their followers hopeless, dead, and confused. Brothers and sisters, this morning, I am here to remind you of the life-saving component of knowing and embracing the powers of the Holy Spirit. Sadly, the believers in this passage were only familiar with one form of life, which left them ignorant due to lack of knowledge. So Paul had to remind them that John's water baptism was a baptism of repentance. John specifically told all those who were baptized to believe in the one that was coming after him, and that is Jesus Christ. So when Jesus is baptized by John, Jesus emerges from the water and he sees the heavens open. It's at that very moment when the heavens open is when the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. Brothers and sisters, the life-saving difference, the element of knowing about Jesus and receiving the Holy Spirit makes all the difference. Allowing the Holy Spirit to de descend on us like a dove is what we need today. Having the Holy Spirit sets us apart from those who don't believe. 
you may notice that I really, really like to preach about the Holy Spirit because I think it's a very important aspect of the Trinity. Because not only does it supply the breath and the life of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is widely recognized as the feminine arm, arm of the Trinity. So therefore, I like to talk about it. Because Paul was a firm believer, equipped with the Holy Spirit, he was able to transfer the loving powers of the Holy Spirit to these believers who were without the Spirit. Paul loved these believers so much that he did not want them to go another day without knowing all the benefits that come with being a believer. This bold transfer of love was very much needed and is still needed today. This week, we got a chance to witness the actions and lifestyle of folks who prefer to live life without the Holy Spirit. The lack of Holy Spirit was completely evident because all of the hate and anger that was displayed. On Thursday, myself and a few others gathered on Zoom to discuss the events on the hill. We all agreed that instead of shouting at the television, or raging war on social media, that in times of distress and despair, it's best that we as believers get together. It's best that we gather together to pray and to uplift our nation and each other. As the conversations went on, we all agreed that if we just started to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, which includes the power of love, things could really begin to change. Brother Kevin reminded us that as believers, this is the perfect time to shine because we have love in our hearts. Love is in our Christian DNA. I know at times it can be challenging to love because the hate seems too much to bear. But in the end, brothers and sisters, love really does conquer it all. Many of us are tired of fighting the same fight. We review our history books and notice that things still seem the same. But if we start to look at this fight for justice through the lens of love, I think we can find some comfort and relief in knowing that love will always win, no matter what. Brother Kevin also reminded us, he said it best, that love is like a garden. The more time and effort you commit to it, the more it grows. And all of us here tonight, today knows that every garden needs to be tended to over and over. It's just not a one and done type deal. You just can't plant the seed of love and hope it grows. It takes water, proper sunlight, and the best soil to make it grow. When love is not cultivated or cared for, just like a garden, weeds and wild animals will start to creep in in attempts to destroy our garden of love. So as believers, we must be diligent and faithful gardeners of love. Paul came back to his garden in Ephesus and he placed his hand on the believers so they too can receive the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I am asking you this morning to exercise your powers of the Holy Spirit. Exercise your powers of love. Reach out to those you love and shower them with love and praise. 
look them in the eyes this morning and say, I love you. Remind them that everything is going to be okay. No matter how bad things may look, we will win because we have the power of love. As believers, it's our time to shine right now because the world needs our love more than ever before. Amen. It's now time for our offering. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and your giving. For those of you who have mailed your offerings and tithes, thank you. We also have the option of donating online if you go to Beaver website at beavermethodist.org and click on giving. Gracious God, use this money and all that we have for building up of your work in this church and the wider world for your glory. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall not thirst. With Christians around the world and throughout centuries, we gather around these symbols of bread and wine, simple elements that speak of nourishment and transformation. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are as close to us as breath, that your love is constant and unfailing. We thank you for all that sustains life, especially for Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, who teaches us how to live out an ethic of justice and peace, and for the promise of transformation made manifest in life, death, and resurrection. We ask you to bless this bread and this cup. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, that we may join with you in promoting the well-being of all creation. Amen. We remember on the night when Jesus and his disciples had their last meal together, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat it as often as you do remember me. In the symbol of the broken bread, we participate in the life of Christ and dedicate ourselves to being his disciple. In the same way he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. In the symbol of the cup, we participate in the new life Christ brings. Let us pray. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, as we have been fed by the seed that became grain and then became bread. May we go out into the world to plant seeds of justice, transformation, and hope. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. participated in today's service. Thank you guys for logging in and being with us this morning. Remember to be the people of love. Let love live in your heart and share the love of Christ with all you meet. Share love by loving those you see regularly Start by loving your community. Share love by loving those who you don't know. How do your actions affect the rest of God's creation? Share love by praying for our world. In this season, we need to see, feel, and share love. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share love, share joy, share peace and hope with all you meet. Amen, and God bless you, Beaver. <laughs>